Hi there, this is Anna from Anna Aspinus Designs and I want to welcome you to Photo Blending with Artsy Transfers. I have been in this space creating digital art and encouraging students just like you to celebrate your photos by combining them with digital artistry as a form of visual storytelling, whether you are a scrapbooker, a photographer, or a photo artist. In this presentation, we're going to recreate this layout design, which incorporates a couple of childhood photos of myself with the Artplay Notabilia bundle, which is now available at Design Cuts. And so if we take a look at what's included in this collection, we have Artplay Palette Notabilia, which includes a selection of digital papers, elements, a brush set, and then transfers and overlays. We also have the artsy transfers that coordinate with this art play palette collection. And we'll be looking at these in closer detail as we proceed with our layout design. We're also going to be dipping into these multimedia layered documents that we can incorporate into our projects as well as looking at how to use these Notabilia photo blends, clipping masks. And then of course there will be addition of a title or some words to provide context to our photos. So I will be using the Notabilia word art mix as well. So let's get started with the business of photo blending with Artsy Transfers. I'm going to return to my Photoshop workspace and I want to minimize my layout design so that I can proceed with a new one. We're going to go to File, New and establish a new layout. And I like to work with a width of 12 inches, a height of 12 inches. But what's important here is the resolution. You must have a resolution of 300 pixels per inch in order to maintain good print quality. Click on the Create tab in order to establish a new layout. And now we want to create a layout foundation onto which we're going to place our photos as shown in our example. Now I want to create my own custom foundation using a solid paper and artsy transfers. If we go back to our digital art supplies and go to the art play palette and look at the digital papery, you can see that we have a variety of different artsy papers as well as solid papers. And then if we go to the second part of the art play palette, you can see that I provided you with a number of PNG files onto which you can embellish those solid digital papers. So you have a couple of choices when you start a digital artistry page. You can select one of the pre-designed artsy papers. You can select a solid paper and then add some of the transfers and overlays from the art play palette, or you can select a solid paper as I am going to go and do in this case, drag it and drop it directly onto our new layout foundation. Click on the check mark to accept the transformation. And then now if I go back to my digital art supplies, you can see we have these artsy transfers. I'm gonna go ahead and open up one of these PSD files. You can see that these look very similar to the transfers and overlays that are in the Artplay palette, but these are delivered in PSD format as opposed to PNG format. So let's take a look at the difference between the two. This is an artsy transfer, and you can see that each of these layers are delivered individually. This means that I can turn on and off the visibility of these layers. I can recolor any of those layers. I can change the placement or the rotation of the layers. So I can essentially modify any of the layers that make up this transfer individually. This gives me a lot of customization and flexibility when I am creating my pages. Now, if I go ahead and open up 
the transfers and overlays and I bring one of these, we have the exact same transfer here, you will see that this is delivered in a single layer format. So while the transfers and overlays have their place in the fact that they are simple and easy to use, you can simply just drag and drop them and not spend the time to customize, then these layered transfer options allow me to have a little bit more flexibility when I'm adding my photos. So in order to move this transfer to my paper design, I'm going to select the first layer in the layers panel with the move tool selected from the tools panel, hold down the shift button on my keyboard and then select all those layers before dragging and dropping that transfer collection onto my layout foundation. And this automatically creates a focal point into which I can add my blended photo. We're now going to add an image into our Artsy Transfer collection. And instead of dragging it directly from its location from its folder here, I am now going to import that photo by going to File, open and then navigating to those digital art supplies. And you can see I have two photos here that I have selected to use for my layout design. So I'm going to double click to open and then with that move tool selected, drag that image directly onto my layout design. Now you can see this is a vintage photo taken in the 70s and it's quite small, but this is the beauty of using these artsy transfers is that you don't have to worry so much about the resolution of the image because those inconsistencies are somewhat masked by the photo artistry process. So I'm going to increase GASP, the size of this photo, by about 50% and then go ahead and click on that check mark to accept the transformation. Now I want my facial features to be on the right hand side of my layout to better accommodate the chosen artsy transfer. So I'm going to go to edit, transform and then go to flip horizontal. And then it's a matter of clipping this photo layer to one or more of the layers in the artsy transfer. And I ideally like to seek out the larger of those layers. And in this case, it's this stain teal, which is at the bottom of the layer stack. So I'm going to drag my photo layer down the layers panel using the move tool from the tools panel and drop it directly above that layer. And then we're going to move that photo over that layer, perhaps increase the size so that it extends the edges of that layer and then go to layer create clipping mask. You can of course use the keystrokes if you prefer to do so. And then it's just a matter of moving that image around to get the best fit for your image. Don't worry about the hard edges. You can always clean those up later by using the eraser tool or a layer mask and brushes. Now I like this faded look. It works in my favor as it's an old photo and I had to increase the size by more than 50%, therefore stretching the pixels available in my image. But if you wanted to have a more visible photo, then you could take that clipping set by selecting those two layers, holding down the shift key, on your keyboard and then dragging them down to the new layer icon. Notice how that makes our photo more dense and therefore more visible. We can also apply blending modes to the photo blends layer by selecting those from the top of the panel. I'm gonna go with this screen option here and then you can refine the effect by adjusting the opacity slider. We can now increase the complexity of our photo montage by adding a secondary artsy transfer. Now, before we do this, I want to first of all, select all of those artsy transfer number one layers and go to layer group layers to keep those organized. I'm going to double click on that label and add 81. And you want to make sure that your cursor is always at the top of the layer stack before you introduce new elements. I'm now going to go to my artsy transfers and 
import ANSI transfer number four. Now it's really important that you drop this file into your Photoshop background and not directly onto your layout design. If you by chance drop a layered file onto your layout design, then you're going to find that all of these individual layers are combined into a single PNG format layer. So I'm going to select all of these layers and then move them onto my layout design and move them into position as preferred. We want to close out that original file and then get to work modifying our layout composition. And so we can turn off the visibility of layers if we want to. We can also move layers as we see fit to get the best fit for our image. You can see that that stain was over the facial area of my image. You can also, if you want to, go ahead and modify the color of those transfers so for example, image adjustments, hue and saturation, we can bring in perhaps more of a purple hue to coordinate with the image in our first artsy transfer design. Feel free also to rotate layers, resize layers, or even reposition layers as you prefer. I'm actually going to select all of these layers and just nudge them a little bit closer to our blended image. And then in the previous transfer, we looked for the most prevalent or the largest of the transfers, which will be this one. But in this case, you'll notice there is this fun stain paint transfer that lies over the top of that. So I'm going to select that layer in this case and go to File, Open, and open up our second image. And then with the Move tool, drag it directly over that stain layer. And notice when you have that layer selected in the Layers panel, it's always going to introduce that new layer on top of the selected layer. So we can immediately then go to Layer, Create Clipping Mask to attach that photo to the image. And then we can reposition this photo. We can go ahead and rotate that photo. We can also edit that photo by perhaps going to image adjustment levels or curves, depending on which version of Photoshop you're working in. I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit and perhaps go to image adjustment hue and saturation and just bring down the saturation slider so that we remove some of that purple color cast. And then we can also, if we want to, reduce the opacity to get the best effect for our photo. Notice now how we're building up this nice photo montage effect simply by clipping our images to the various layers in the artsy transfers. Now, if you wanted to show a better view of the image and not have quite a transparent blended effect, then you could incorporate a photo blends clipping mask. And to do this, you're going to access the photo blends mask of your choice. In this case, I'm going to go with the photo blends number three in the Notabilia photo blends collection. And you have the choice to use either the PNG format or again, the photo blends format. And in this case, I just want to use the masking part of this photo blend. So I'm going to open up the PSD file and select the photo blends layer. And with the auto select option unchecked, I'm then going to move this onto my layout design. Now we want to make sure that our cursor is in the correct position in our layers panel directly above our clipping set, and then just bring that over onto our layout design. You can go ahead and you can resize it, you can rotate it, and then you can double click to accept that transformation go ahead and close this down. And then now I'm going to duplicate that photo layer in the clipping set by dragging it to the new layer icon, moving it above our photo blends clipping mask. I want to increase the opacity back up to 100% and then go to layer create clipping mask. And so now you can see how we're able to get a better view of that photo. 
because of the age and pixelation of my image and the fact that it's set against a dark background, I don't like how the black transitions into the white. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this effect, but just wanted to demonstrate the option of including photo blends clipping masks into your artsy transfer designs. Now, before we move on to embellishing our composition, I just want to clean up some of the edges. You can do this using the eraser tool and an art play palette brush, or you can use a layer mask and brushes. Now, I appreciate that the eraser tool is a destructive tool, but for this purpose, it is much faster and my personal preference. So I'm going to select the eraser tool from the tools panel, and I have loaded the art play palette notabilia into my brushes panel. I'm going to select a brush that has distressed edges and then I'm systematically going to select the photos which I want to edit. So I see a hard edge at the top here so I'm just going to go ahead and just remove that and then do the same with the copy. You can see how we're able to remove that hard edge. And then if we go to our second image, you can see we've got this splat around the edge here. So I'm gonna select that and I'm just going to remove it. Now, look how quick and easy that was. Had I used the layer mask, then yes, I would have had the ability to remove those effects. But I'm a memory keeper and not necessarily working for clients who are gonna come back and ask for changes. So I find this a much quicker and easier way to modify my images. And you can see here, there's this hard edge as well. So it just gives you the flexibility to be able to do that quickly and easily. If I was doing a more complex masking task, then I would of course use the layer mask and brushes. When you're happy with your photo blending using Artsy Transfers, then it's a simple matter of finishing the embellishment. I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these layers and go to layer group layers, and then I'm going to ensure that I have that auto select option unchecked and just move this to the right. This is going to allow me to add a transfer on the left hand side to create a band design to connect the imagery from one side of the layout to the next. So I'm going to navigate to my art play palette transfers and overlays and select this transfer and drag and drop directly onto my layout design. And notice how that just creates this nice movement of the eye through the layout. I'm then going to introduce a multimedia element. So let's go and navigate to our multimedia documents number two, and I am looking for the second document. I'm going to open up the PSD file by dragging it into our Photoshop background. Remember that we want to retain all of those lovely layers, and then we're gonna select those layers and move them onto our layout design. Now you could go ahead and leave this just like that and it would be perfect but you also have the option to move these layers around and perhaps turn off the visibility of some of those layers so I really like this NB and the flower but not so thrilled necessarily by this paper frame so let's go ahead and turn off that paper frame layer and then maybe move this stain layer. If we select the auto select option at the top of our screen, we can then access those layers independently and perhaps place this stain so it hugs the edge of our photo collage. So I'm gonna just drag this down to the bottom so that sits nicely behind those layers. This new element focal point here provides a nice location for our title. So let's go ahead and close out this multimedia element and now go and navigate to our word art that's available. And I know that I want to use this beaded threads and then I also want to add a word art and then also perhaps a transfer. So let's go ahead and select this one and 
bring this into our layout design. Now, because we're working with a PSD file, I'm going to drop these into our Photoshop background, let them open up, and then we'll add them individually. If you were just using with PNG files, you could drop them directly onto your canvas. And then we want to make sure that we have the right place in our layers panel selected. So we want to place our transfer behind this element, but on top of our photo collage. So select the group layer that we created of our photo collage. We can go ahead and we can rename that if we want to. And then we can select that word transfer and then just drag it in behind there. Go ahead and close it out. And then we can also bring in our title so that it sits directly on top of that transfer. And notice how I am moving these elements together to create a cluster and therefore a focal point to draw the eye into the two images that are in our artsy transfer collage. I also like how the heart threading also encircles the stuff word part of this particular title. I'm now going to strengthen those threads by bringing in just the thread part of the PSD file of the beaded threads. And I can go ahead and place that in there. You might want to bring that up the layers panel so that it's not hidden behind the flower image. To further strengthen and add visual interest to our title cluster, we can go back to our digital art supplies, navigate to our elements folder in our art play palette collection and select some dimensional elements. And to select elements independently, you're going to hold down the control or command key on your keyboard. So I'm going to select this button layer and also this dragonfly and then perhaps this little notes layer and then drag those into my workspace. Now we can drag these directly onto our canvas and click on the check mark to accept that. Now because I wasn't mindful about the placement of my cursor, these have been introduced at the bottom of my layers panel. So holding down the shift key, I'm going to select those layers and then drag them back up to the top of my panel and now they become visible. And then we're going to perhaps place the dragonfly over here. We can puncture our element cluster and provide a center to our flower with that button element. And if you want to change the color of a button element, you can simply go to image adjustments, hue and saturation, and then you can change the hue slider. And notice how that brings a nice purple color into the mix. You can also increase the intensity by going to image adjustment levels and increasing the shadows and the highlights just to give that a little bit of a pop. And then to add some dimension to these elements, then you can add drop shadow layer styles. So you're going to select the layer in the layers panel, then go up to layer, layer style, and then go down to drop shadow. And I like to have my blend mode on linear burn, have my color as black, I like an opacity of about 40%, an angle of 120, and then for labels that don't have much of a shadow, I like to have about two pixels on there. If I'm working with buttons or more dimensional embellishments, then obviously that layer style is going to be a little greater. So we could go in and perhaps put eight pixels in size and distance on that button and then maybe just five on our dragonfly. So the other way to do this, of course, is to just increase the sliders until you get the right fit or the right look for your image. So notice now how we've sort of created a visual triangle around our focal image. We have this great cluster of elements that has been comprised of a variety of elements with different element properties. So we have different dimensions, we have different textures, we have different colors, we have different shapes and different sizes, all of which have been grouped together to create an interesting cluster. And then we have a cluster over on the left hand side of our page, which 
is also comprised of different properties. And then this leads us up to this element cluster at the top here, which kind of guides the eye around our photo blending with artsy transfers. We can then complete the page by adding some words if we choose to do so. And for this, I'm just going to go ahead and just drag the text box from my original layout and add it to my new layout. If you wanted to create your own text box, then you would select the type tool from the tools panel and go ahead and click, drag and release. And then it's just a matter of adding in your own personal type. You could also type in a word processing document and then copy and paste your text into the text box. You can accept the transformation. And now if we go ahead and take a look at these two layouts side by side, you'll see that there are some slight differences. It's very difficult to actually recreate the same layout twice. Let me go ahead and zoom out just a little bit so that we can see these two layouts side by side. But I think for the most part, you'll see that there is a lot of similarity. It looks like this photo here was much larger in the first place, and I've got this one much lighter. So we could actually go and select this photo and perhaps go to image adjustment levels and maybe increase the brightness on that could also increase the size too to remove some of that darker background. And then the same with this image here, it looks like the placement is slightly different. So you want to hold down the control or command key and select both those photo layers so that they can be moved at the same time. And I can make that much larger to bring that in like this. It also looks like we have an additional paint layer down here. So if I go and I navigate to our artsy transfer layers, you can see that we have this paint layer here and I simply unselected the auto select option. I'm holding the command of the control key down on my keyboard and I'm just dragging that down. So just repositioning that layer. Multiple ways of being able to use these transfers to create your own custom designs. You can combine the different layers together. You can use different layers from different artsy transfers to create your own custom designs through turning off the visibility and through resizing, rotating, repositioning and recoloring, then you are able to combine photos with this type of artistry to create multiple different results. I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation and that has provided you with some guidance for making the most of your digital art supplies by Anna Aspinus Designs. Due to time constraints, I was unable to provide the commands for Photoshop Elements users, but you will find these in a video called Useful Techniques for Photoshop and Elements over on my website at AnnaAspinusDesigns.com. Go ahead and locate that in the resources section of the website. You'll also find tons of free digital art supplies as well as complimentary classes. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. I can be reached at Anna at AnnaAspinusDesigns.com. I hope that you are able to stay home, stay well, and of course, remain inspired. Thanks for watching and please do take care.